Hello everyone. For the past month, I've had my shop closed because I have been undergoing treatment for a rare nerve disease called Guillain-Barre, which left me very weak and unable to do much of anything. However, my recovery is to the point where I'm able to start making twisty puzzles again, and as such, I've gone ahead and reopened my shop. And with that, I wanted to make a demonstration video on this 3x3x5. I've made 3x3x5s before, however, this one is magnetic, so I wanted to highlight this puzzle in particular. First of all, this is made from a YJG long 5x5 magnetic, which is a smaller 5x5. And just to put that into perspective, here is a standard 3x3. And as you can see, it's not much larger than a standard 3x3, which makes it a very nice small form factor and a great travel puzzle. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these sticker shades. This is a post-process puzzle, so turning sounds very smooth. And as usual, these shades look great. They're once again made by a personal friend of mine. And again, since this is made from a stickerless puzzle, the inner stickerless colors are visible uh, when making turns. However, this puzzle has black extensions, which fully cover that uh, when turns are completed. Going into turning quality, Just with a T-perm there, this puzzle flows quite well. Corner cutting is quite good at just about a cube, QB. On all sides. And there's not really much reverse as is the case with mostly puzzles. Although it does appear with this puzzle there's a bit of a higher tolerance. However, because this is magnetic, this doesn't really matter as much as if I turn this layer slowly, it will just click into place. And the magnets on a Zilong are more prominent on the inner layers than the other layers. So in particular, the inner layers click into place quite strongly as compared to the outer layers. But regardless, the magnets do provide a very good experience and good flow um, when turning through algorithms. And I guess I should probably do a keyboard algorithm, so I will just do a adjacent center swap. So we've swapped the green and orange, and now I'll do it again. Even with my diminished dexterity, I'm still able to connect those algorithms, mostly fine. But really to demonstrate the true turning of this puzzle, I'm actually just going to do a full scramble and solve. Just because this puzzle doesn't take long to solve, I will just include the full solve in this video. So first, we go ahead and scramble it without shape-shifting it. And that looks pretty good. So now we can go ahead and conduct shape-shifting moves. And now the puzzle has essentially bandaged into a 3x3. Three three. And I'd say that's pretty good. So I'll just do a quick solve. This isn't a tutorial, but this is just how I would solve this. So first, um, we do need to get the cube back into shape. And we also need to make sure that the middle layers, all the middle layer pieces are where they should be. And I am going fast and I'm not explaining all these steps. There are plenty of good tutorial videos by other people, not by me. Um, my tutorials are not great. On YouTube that are available for a 3x3x5. So, so OL stage. This one I can't remember. Oh, 
Okay, so basically what we've done is we've gotten it back into shape, and I've gone ahead and ensured that this middle layer is solved. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and solve this bottom layer here. So I've gotten all of the bottom center pieces in, and now I can go ahead and swap in the edge pieces. And just like that, now I have two layers done. And now what remains is the top layer. Whoops, lock up. Lock ups still do happen. And now I just have an opposite center swap. And then the, the parity I have to deal with. I almost forgot the algorithm for a second there. Anyways, this entire middle section is done. So now I will go ahead and repeat the process for the top layer. First, complete my white cross, and now I can start to deposit the corners. Just like that, this bottom layer is now done. And now we just have the top layer. And of course, on a 3x3x5, three three there is no top layer parity. So we just have an opposite swap followed by an adjacent swap. And just like that, it is solved. Hopefully, that solve demonstrated how the puzzle performs in normal use. And it is certainly speed cubable. So, with that, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.